past few centuries, natural calamities, weathering and human negligence endangered many heritage buildings. Cultural heritage's importance is well recognized, and there is an increasing pressure to document these sites as a way of preserving them. Several different documentation methods exist, but whichever method is used, the goal is results as accurate as possible. In recent years, digital close-range photogrammetry and laser scanning technology have become increasingly popular because of their precise results. Close-range photogrammetry is a measurement technology that can be used to extract 3D points from the photograph of a site. These points can be used with 3D modeling software for accurate visualization. Laser scanning involves a device called a 3D scanner, which analyzes a real-world object or environment to collect data on its shape. The collected data can be imported into specialized corresponding software to generate a highly accurate 3D template for digitizing the object. Set in the heart of Scotland's largest city is Glasgow Cathedral, a superb example of Scottish Gothic architecture. It is built on the site where St Mungo, the first bishop in the ancient British kingdom of Strathclyde, was thought to have been buried in 612 AD. The present cathedral was built during the 13th to 15th centuries and is the only medieval cathedral on the Scottish mainland that survived the 1560 reformation virtually intact. As one of the oldest structures in Glasgow, there's no question about the importance of its preservation. The cathedral's most well-known feature remains the tomb of St. Mungo, but it hosts a wealth of other architectural treasures, including the entrance nave, the elaborately vaulted lower church, the Blackadder aisle, and the famous Millennium window. The exterior facades of the cathedral are just as fascinating as the interior architecture. The western facades change considerably through the building's history. Its doorway, featuring elaborate English mouldings, was designed in the middle of the 13th century, when the two towers on either side of it were destroyed. Above the entrance doorway is the creation window, with elaborate mouldings of arches, each enclosing lancets and magnificent stained glass windows. Glasgow Cathedral's west front serves as this project's subject. This facade being easily accessible, clear of any obstacles, along with its architectural complexity, makes it an excellent test case to illustrate the differences between the close-range photogrammetry and laser techniques. In photogrammetry, the first step is calibrating the camera. This allows Photomodeler, a PC-based photogrammetric measurement tool, to interpret the camera's pictures accurately by determining how to adjust for any particular camera's lens distortion and focal length. It then allows the user to reconstruct 3D digital models using the 2D digital images from the camera. Calibrating a camera in Photomodeler involves taking photographs of the supplied Photomodeler calibration grid a 35mm slide projected on the wall. The user holds the camera in several set positions around the grid, taking a minimum of 8 photographs. Photomodeler then imports all the images, calculates the calibration information for the camera, and saves it for future use. The more photographs used, the less the error. Anything under 0.1 is considered acceptable, but considerably lower error is very achievable. As in the case of this project, the camera for this project is the Nikon D80. 50 to 60 photographs documented the cathedral's west front although not all of them could be used for 3D evaluation. After saving all the images onto a computer, 
the project begins with just two to three pictures. This is the first photo opened in the Photo Modeler workspace. It is the front elevation of the cathedral and works well as the entire building can be seen within the picture. The point marking tool marks individual points on the photograph, starting with the corners to form the building's shape. Photo Modeler uses this mark information to produce its 3D results, so point marking accurately is essential. The user then connects individual points with the line tool or the curve tool wherever applicable to form the outline of the building. After opening the second photograph, the process repeats, placing points on the same locations on the building as in the previous image. Next comes the referencing stage where the user manually matches points across photographs. One image becomes the source, where the first point is selected and the other image is the destination where the point matching the first point's location on the building is selected. All points on the photographs match and reference each other by the end of the project. With the photos marked and referenced, Photo Modeler processes all the data and creates a 3D model and a total error bar to show how well processing went. The 3D viewer displays the results so far. More photos can be added and referenced to those already done to create a complete wireframe model. Once the wireframe is finished, the user can add surfaces using the several surface model tools available to completely finish the 3D modeling process. One major advantage of Photomodeler is that at this step, textures can be extracted straight from the photographs and mapped with great accuracy onto the 3D model. Finally, scale and rotation data complete the model so it can be exported at the correct size and orientation. A general 3D software, such as Maya, can import the model and its textures for further enhancement if required. Laser scanning begins, appropriately, with scanning the building. The Leica Scan Station C10 fully integrated system that can operate on its own without an attached laptop, scan the west front of Glasgow Cathedral. The scan station C10 includes the Smart X mirror that lets users conduct full 360 degree scans using a spinning mirror that operates on a rotating mode. During the project, the laser scanner is fixed on a tripod and positioned facing the west front of the cathedral. The scanner shoots laser pulses at the building along a variety of paths and measures the time it takes for each pulse to return to the scanner. Because the speed of light is constant, the scanner to building surface distance can be calculated quite easily and precisely. The result of the scan is a point cloud, a three-dimensional grouping of points that represent a portion of the facade's surface. Once the first scan finishes and its data is stored in the internal hard disk, the scanner is moved to a new position and the process repeats. After scanning, scanner software Leica Geosystems Cyclone imports all the data. Each scan opens with Cyclone's model space. The next phase, registration, 
involves weaving together the different scans to form a complete three-dimensional object. Three points are selected from each scan, taking care to select the points most likely to be in the same location on the object. To ensure that the software pieces the scans together with the least error possible, the points vary as much from each other as possible by being clear of any landmarks or varying depths. After the scans are registered, leaving one three-dimensional point model per subject, the point cloud goes through a series of steps before it is ready for conversion. First, it is exported from Cyclone and imported into 3D reshaper software, where the point cloud becomes a 3D mesh. The 3D mesh is then saved in a format that allows a general 3D software to import it. In a 3D software like Maya, the data acts as a reference template. A modeler uses this template to reconstruct the cathedral with polygonal planes and cylinders. Once the modeling is completed, textures are mapped into the object's surface, creating a realistic 3D textured model. Techniques like close-range photogrammetry and laser scanning allow conservators to create very accurate 3D models of buildings. The best method really depends on your project than on the pluses and minuses of each technique. Virtual reconstruction of architectural heritage monuments allows complex information to be presented in a visual way, but these models are much more than graphic reconstructions, they are simulations. And because they are simulations, researchers can use them to explore a site in three dimensions and from infinite viewpoints without intruding or damaging the site itself.